فرما صلوا على النبي اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على سراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنزر قوم ما أنزر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إن جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي الأسكا إلى الأسكان فهم مقمهون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأخشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذرهم من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب وبشروا بمغفرة واجر كريم إنا نهن نهي الموت ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحسيناهم في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب الكارية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليهم مسنين فكذبوهما فأززنا بسالس فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تغزبون قالوا ربنا يعلموا إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لن تنتهم لنرجمنكم ولم يسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم مأكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسى كالي قوم اتبع المرسلين اتبع من لا يسلكم أجر وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فترني وإليه ترجعون أتخذوا من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بالزر لا تبني أني شفاتا شيئا ولا ينكزون إني زل في زلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون كيلت كل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لربي وجعلنا <تصفيق> وجلني من من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومي من بعد من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا سيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على الإباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا أن إلا كانوا يحتهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من الكرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا مهزرون وآية لهم, وآية لهم الأرز الميتة أهيناها وأخرجناها منها هبا فمنها يأكلون وجلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من الأيون ليأكلوا من سمره وما عملت أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلكوا منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز الأليم والكمر قدرناه منازل حتى ذاك الأرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك الكمر والليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبون وآية لهم أنا هملنا زريتهم في الفلك المشهون وكلكنا لهم وكلكنا لهم من من 
مِثْلِهِمْ مَا يَرْكَبُونَ وَإِنْ نَشَأْ نُغْرِكُمْ فَلَا شَرِيكَ لَهُمْ وَلَا هُمْ يُنْقَذُونَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَمَتَاعًا إِلَى حِينٍ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ اتَّقُوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ وَمَا تَأْتِيهِم مِّنْ آيَةٍ مِّنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَّا كَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِضِينَ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنُطْعِمُ مَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ أَطْعَمَهُ إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ ما ينظرون الا صيحه واحده تاخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستتيون توسيتا ولا الى اهلهم يرجعون ونفق في السور فيزا من الاجداس الى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا لو قالوا يا لو قالوا ويا لو نعم ون <coughs> ഷൈമ <laughs> الم احد اليكم يا بني ادم ان لا تعبدوا الشيطان انه لكم عدو مبين واني بدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد ازل منكم جبلا كثيرا افلم تكونوا تاكلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم تؤدون اسلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نكتم ولا فواهم وتكلمون ايديهم وتشهد ارجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لتمسنا على اعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فانا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مزيا ولا يرجعون ومن نمره ننكس في الخلق افلا ياكلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له ان هو الا ذكر وقران مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويهك القول على الكافرين اولم يروا ان خلقنا لهم مما ملت ايدينا ان امن ان امن فهم له مالكون ഫലയുസരുസരുലോ اولم يرى الانسان ان خلقنا من نطفه فاذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلق قال من يحيي الاذام وهي رميم قل يحيي الذي انشا اول مره وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الاخضر نارا فاذا انتم منه توكدون اوليس الذي خلق السماوات والارض بقادر على ان يخلق مثلهم بل وهو الخلاق العليم انما امره اذا اراد شيئا ان يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء واليه ترجعون 
المؤمنون صدق الله العلي العظيم الفاتحة ما السلوات بس میں گبرائی تھی خنجر تجھ پہ چلتا دیکھ کر پھر کسی مشکل میں گر کر میں نہ گبرائی حسین آج بھی زیناب کی آتی ہے صدا بائی حسین کون تھا جو مرنے والو میں نہیں تھا خوب رو کون تھا جو مرنے والو میں نہیں تھا خوب رو بھولنے بیٹی تو کس کس کی نہ یاد آئی حسین آج بھی زیناب کی آتی ہے صدا بائی حسین آج بھی زیناب کی آتی ہے صدا بائی حسین صلی اللہ محمد و علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ محمد و علی محمد 
अकबर तुम्हें मालूम है क्या मांग रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो अकबर तुम्हें मालूम है क्या मांग रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो इस आलम गुरबत में तुम्हें जान दुखे से इस दश्त मुसीबत में तुम्हें जान दुखे से इस वक्त कयामत में तुम्हें जान दुखे से लाल जो तुम इस उगा मांग रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो अकबर तुम्हें मालूम है क्या मांग रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो क्या गुजरेगी इस बाप के दिल पर नहीं सोचा तुमने ये मेरी जान अली अकबर नहीं सोचा मर जाऊंगा मैं तुझसे बिचर कर नहीं सोचा तुम मुझसे जईफी का सामान रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो अकबर तुम्हें मालूम है क्या मांग रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो दिल रोता है नजरों से अगर दूर हो बेटा किस तरह जुदाई तेरी मंजूर हो बेटा तुम ही मेरी आंखें हो मेरा नूर हो बेटा मुझसे मेरी आंखों की जिया मांग रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो अकबर तुम्हें मालूम है क्या मांग रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो इस आलम गुरबत में तुम्हें जान दुखे से इस दश्त मुसीबत में तुम्हें जान दुखे से इस वक्त कयामत में तुम्हें जान दुखे से लाल जो तुम इस उगा मांग रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो अकबर तुम्हें मालूम है क्या मांग रहे हो तुम बाप से मरने की रिजा मांग रहे हो सतारा मोहम्मद वाली मोहम्मद मुबारक Sayyid Shabir Karmani, respected elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Surah Al-Fatiha is requested for Isala Sawab of Marhumeen, listed on, on the screen, and for all Marhumeen, Al-Fatiha.
I am my Ujib is requested for the names listed on the screen and for all those in need here and elsewhere. Let us recite together. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Amma yujibu al-Muttar idha da'a wa yakshifu su Amma yujibu al-Muttar idha da'a wa yakshifu su Amma yujibu al-Muttar idha da'a wa yakshifu su أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويغشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويغشف السوء اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد We will be commemorating the wafat of Hazrat Abu Talib tomorrow Tuesday March 9th at 7:30 p.m. Sheikh Mushab Khaliq will be speaking on Abu Talib God's special agent on Wednesday March 10th we will be celebrating the night of mabath here at the mosque with Sheikh Mushaba conducting the amal program on thursday we will have a regular program with Sheikh Mushaba discussing the topic of mabath narrations and implications the outreach team is continuing their initiative of sponsoring food for a local chapter in the month of shaaban the requested donation is $5 per person however any amount is welcomed Donations can be made via PayPal or the website as shown on the screen. Finally, if you or your child is interested in reciting during programs held here at the masjid, please reach out to Brother Ali Raza Karmali at 407-619-2021 for the Genocide or Sister Jamila Gulam Hussain at 407-255-5112 for the ladies or sign up using the link on the screen. Jazakallah. At this time, I would like to invite Sayyid Shabir to come recite tonight's Madlis. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat. الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بسير بالعباد ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسن الله ونعم الوكيل ونعم المولى ونعم النصير والصلاة والسلام وتحية والإكرام على الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد الذي سمع في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرض بأب القاسم محمد اللهم صل وعلى آل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله أن مرس وطهرهم تطهيرا وقل رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين ينفقون في الصراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين صدق الله العلي العظيم زينوا مجالسكم بالصلوات على محمد وآل محمد الله My respected elders, brothers and sisters in Iman سلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته what is the contribution of Imam Musa al-Kadhim alayhi salam? Keep that question in the back of your mind. Inshallah, we will return to it. We're told there's a moment in time where our sixth Imam, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, is returning from Hajj. After having completed the Hajj pilgrimage, along with his wife, they stop, of course, coming from Mecca on the way back to Medina. 
On the way back to Medina, they stop in a location called Abwa. When they stop at this location, they are told the wife of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, who was in a state of expectancy at that point in time, she was in a state where she had gone into labor. After some moments in time, our sixth Imam receives the news that he has been, has been given a child, a young boy, by the name which he gives him, him Musa. Musa. That, that is, is the, the birth, birth of the Imam alayhi salam. That, that in, in the, the earliest stages, in the earliest environment, environment this, this individual who you I and I have come to commemorate tonight, has such a pivotal role, such an important role, such a vital role in the establishment and the fortification of our school of thought, the Ja'fari school of thought. Yet unfortunately, the environment is that we only have one day to commemorate this Imam, for example. As you know that his birth is in the month of Safar, in the seventh. And in particular, it is Ayyam Aza, for example. So typically we are rendered to only one night, this night, to remember and commemorate this immense contribution of this Imam. In the brief moments that we have together, I want to cover a substantial amount. And I request that you stay with me, because I have to encapsulate two majalis in one. Because there is no the wiladat, as I mentioned, we have to cover the contribution of this Imam. Therefore, in the moments that we have together, I want to look at number one, what was some of the early part of the life of the Imam, which many times we overlook and we glance over because we're not able to commemorate the Imam fully, number one. Number two, what was the era and the time of the Imam? What was going on in Medina? What was going on in Baghdad? What was going on in the Islamic world? And how did the Imam alayhi salam conquer all of the difficulties that were around him from a theological level, from a philosophical level, from a spiritual level, all of the different schools of thought that were emerging. What were those schools of thought? And what was the Imam's defense during those times? Although he was at many times in jail during his life. The, the third level of what I want to look at with respect to the Imam's contribution is, how did he establish a network? How did he establish a system to protect and preserve the shayyu through his actions and his stand, although he was in prison? I then want to look at, for example, with respect to the Imam alayhi salam, how did the Shia actually get to the Imam, although he was in prison? And when they got to him, in what state did they find the Imam, for example? I also want to look at how did the Imam end up in Baghdad when he was in Medina at the first level? How did he end up there? What happened? The, what were those chain of events that led to the Imam moving from Medina towards Baghdad and where he was ultimately left this world? What were those moments of the Musiba of the Imam? And what is his immense Musiba that sometimes we are not able to do justice to understand the immense contribution of the Imam and the Musiba of the Imam? These are our stages of analysis for this evening, inshallah. Wherever you are here in Florida or wherever you are hearing my voice from the bottom of your heart send us salawat on Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad At the first level, ulama have commented on why this Imam was given this name, for example, Musa. Of course, it's speculation, but the, imam, the ulama have commented. For example, you have Nabi Musa and you have Imam Musa, for example. In the Prophets, you have the Prophet Moses, who was given the Torah, the Torah. And at the same level, you have Imam Musa al kadhim who we are here to commemorate tonight. Why this name? Because everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses for the Ahlul Bayt, and everything the Ahlul Bayt choose for themselves, has a hujjah and a lesson. Sometimes we understand that lesson, sometimes we don't. The ulama say, Nabi Musa alayhi salam was known for his anger, for example. He was known as someone who had anger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with respect to this Imam, he showed that this is the Imam who's the exact opposite at that level. If that Musa had anger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this Musa is the one who is kadhimin al which, which brings, brings me to, to the ayah that, that I recited at the, the beginning, which was, الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين Ayah 134 of Surah Al Imran, Surah 3, Ayah 134. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He says, Alladina yunfiquna fi sarai wa dharra. Those who give, who do infaq, who give out of that which Allah has given them, but in which state? Yunfiquna fi sarai wa dharra. When they have and when they don't have. 
One day, when, when we live in a society, when Allah has given you 1 million, 2 million, 10 million, Alhamdulillah. And you give in that state, Alhamdulillah. But the ayah doesn't stop there. Yunfiquna fi sarai wa dharra. That when they have, they give, and when they don't have, they still give. Who are these personalities? Who are these people that when they are in a state of ease they give and dharra, adversity they also give? This adversity part especially, when one, one has they can give, but when one doesn't have and they, they still, still give, give this, this is particular, is particular to Ahlul Bayt The, the Ali Muhammad, Muhammad has, has that, that ability, ability that when, when they, they didn't, didn't even have something they, they would give. give. Because at the level of when you have something, the ulama say, when you have and you give, this is called sakhawat. This is called generosity. But there's another word for when you don't have and you still give. What is that? That is karam or kareem. The one who gives when they don't even have themselves, that individual is someone who is kareem. That in the most difficult time, they give to someone when they don't even have. This is something that you will find in the Ahlul Bayt Salam. Whether it was with wealth or otherwise. You may say, what, what do you mean otherwise? For example, Amir al-Mu'mineen is in battle, Imam Ali. When Imam Ali is in battle, there's a moment in time where he overcomes his enemy, the person on the other side, his, his opposition. When Imam overcomes the opposition, he, his sword, the other person's sword fell away. When the other person's sword fell away, he said, Ya Ali, habli saifak. Oh Ali, give me your sword. Amir al muminin has overcome the other person on the other side. He takes Zulfiqar and he gives it to him. Allahu Akbar. Who, who is, is this, this imam? imam? Who in, in the, the heat, heat of battle, battle he, he doesn't, doesn't forget, forget his haram. haram. He, he doesn't, doesn't forget his sahawa. He, he doesn't, doesn't forget his generosity. No, to, to give in a state, state when the other person has nothing. Allahu Akbar. This is the state of the Ahlul Bayt. The Quran is advising you and I to do this. You see, I've met, alhamdulillah, through the majalis of Ahlul Bayt, I've met some of the people who Allah has given them more than enough for a lifetime or two. And interestingly, some of the ones who give, not everyone gives, but the ones who do give, it's amazing that the mentality that they have. They say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as soon as you open the gate of giving and you understand that this is a trust from Allah and Allah has kept you as a custodian of this wealth to distribute it amongst His servants, the dynamics change. Then you realize that when you begin to give, He will make sure that you get. This is the principle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we understand that, we go very, very, very far, far in life, life inshallah. inshallah. But the ayah doesn't stop, stop there. Well, 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 and, and they, they control, control their, their anger, the Qur'an says. This, this is where the name of Imam Musa al-Kadhim comes from. His complete title is Kadhimin al-Ghayth. It comes from this line. The Kadhim means the one who controls. Controls what? Ghayth. His anger. That in the most heated moment, someone could say the worst things to him. They could treat him in the worst way. way yet the Imam would completely control himself. But the ayah doesn't stop there. Wal-Afina Not only do they control their anger, they forgive the people. Allahu Akbar. It doesn't stop there. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. And Allah loves the one who do, does good. Allah loves those who do, do good. Why? You see, sometimes we, if you just want to see this, see when people are driving, for example. You see, sometimes people have road rage when they're driving. Or for example, someone gets in an argument with their spouse, for example. Someone gets upset at their children, for example. Or the child gets upset at the parent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us control, control that moment. You've heard all of these slogans of mindfulness and awareness and consciousness today. What is that? That is all the control, control of, of the nafs. nafs. But not, not only, only that. that. Once, Once sometimes, sometimes people control, control but, they but they don't, they don't forgive, forgive others. others. The ayah says forgive, forgive others, others, others also. This is this something, something that will be very apparent when we come to the relations of families in a moment. Remember this point. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves those who do good. This is the principle that the Imam salam teaches us. The tafsir, the ulama, whenever they write this ayah, our scholars, they highlight that this verse references Imam al-Kadhim, is in reference to Imam al-Kadhim. Although the Quran was revealed much earlier. But the tafsir completion is Imam al-Kadhim. Remember, Remember, Quran, Quran not, not the Quran, Quran is summit. summit. Nonetheless, I'm moving, I'm moving to the, to the next, next level. level. There's, There's a, a moment, moment in time, time where, where the Imam salam, the earliest known waqiyah of his life, the earliest known narration of his life, 
three years old, Safwan al-Jamal. This is in Medina. In Medina, a companion of the Imam by the name of Safwan al-Jamal, he was a businessman with camels. That was his camel business. This Safwan al-Jamal says, I saw a moment in time where, the, where I left the Ima, house of Imam al-Sadiq, the sixth Imam. When I left the house of Imam al-Sadiq, right outside, I saw an environment where there's a young boy who's about three years old, and he's playing with a young baby goat. A young animal, he's playing with this baby goat. I thought he was playing with him. But when I looked closer, I realized that at that point in time, he was helping the animal bend its ears, and he was saying something to the animal. At that point in time, I got closer, Safwan says. When I got closer to this, uh, this young boy, I realized that he was saying something. What was he saying? He was directing this, this animal at that point in time towards a particular direction. And he was giving it some instructions. I said, I said oh, oh young, young man, can, can I please ask you, what, what were you doing at this moment? moment? He, he said, said at, at that point, point in time, I realized that this young boy was telling this animal to face towards the Qibla, towards the Kaaba. And he was teaching this animal how to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was telling it to do this zikr and that zikr. At that point in time, I said, Oh young man, who are you? He says, I am Musa, the son of Ja'far. At that point in time, he realized that I understood that these people were not of the ordinary nature. And I asked him at that point in time that you are teaching this animal how to pray. He says, we are here for guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only for the humans, but for the animals and otherwise. The Imam Ali Muslim at that young age, is because remember imamat is part of the lutf of Allah, the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The imam is here to guide at every moment in time. But I want to come to another level of analysis, still in the imam's youth. The era of time of the imamat, this is where the contribution of the imam comes in. Remember, the imam is in jail, is in, in prison for at least 14 years according to most ulama. Some say much more. There's a difference of opinion amongst the ulama. How long was Imam al in prison? Nonetheless, at least 14 years, if not much more. But in that environment, how did he protect the shayyu? What were the threats that were emerging? Not threats, what were the other views and schools of thoughts that were emerging? And in that environment, the imam had to preserve. There were at least three levels. The first level. Do you know our brothers in Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, for example, they have their schools of thought, their respective schools of fiqh or jurisprudence. What are, what are those schools, schools of, thought? of thought? You have, you have the, the Hanafi, Hanafi school, school, the Maliki school, 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 the Shafi'i school, school, the Hanbali school. school. All, four All four of the, of the imams of our brothers, brothers in the Sunnah in fiqh are during the time of Imam al kadhim They're all during the time of our seventh Imam. Now imagine, at one level you have all these four scholars for our brothers in Ahlul Sunnah, and on the other side you have Imam al kadhim who's in prison on top of that. And at the next level when you realize it, what happened, was there was there was a moment of time where there were also the philosophers. There was a movement where philosopher, philosophy was rising, particularly Greek philosophy was becoming very popular. Plato, Aristotle, and Socrates and the like. It was becoming very popular and there was a reason why the rulers wanted that to be. And at the third level, it was the era and time where the Sufi movement was rising tremendously. The Sufis were spreading their views and their concepts and their ideas. All of these three movements are moving at once and at the same time there's only there's one Imam Kazim who is countering all of these although he's in prison. There's a moment in time one of the Imams of our brothers in Sunnah of fiqh, of fiqh, of jurisprudence is Imam Abu Hanifa. Most of the Muslim world is Hanafi. Of course you know Imam Abu Hanifa was a student of Imam As-Sadiq for at least two years. He said if I did not have those two years I would not be able to, I would have perished. Nonetheless, Imam Abu Hanifa at a young age had a encounter with Imam al-Kadhim. The narration says Imam al-Kadhim was about five years old at this time, five years old. Abu Hanifa comes to the house of Imam al-Sadiq in Medina. He has a question. Many people had questions. It was a very busy place. The door of the Imam used to be open. People used to come and go, ask questions day and night. Remember, the university of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi At that point in time, do you know what happened? Abu Hanifa comes, he's not able to get his answer. At that point in time, he's directed to the son of the Imam, Imam al kadhim alayhi salam. What was his issue? Remember, the rulers had a connection at that time. Remember, I've told you this poem before, and this share before, remember it, never forget it. Jisko bhi shaykh ho shah ne, hukumay khuda diya qarar, humne nahi kiya wo kaam, haa ba khuda nahi kiya, aur nisbat-e ilm hai bohat, haakim-e-wakt ko aziz, 
اس نے تو کار جہل بھی بے علما نہیں کیا دی آئیڈیا دیٹ ون ایور دا رولر دے رولر ہیو آلویز یوز علما تھرو آؤٹ ہسٹری بنو امیہ بنو عباس اور ایکسپرٹ آف دس دے یوز ٹو بائی اینڈ سیل علما ڈے ان ڈے آؤٹ آل ڈے ایوری ڈے ٹو گیٹ دیر اینڈ سو وٹ ڈی دا رولنگ کلاس ونٹ دے ونٹ اے نیریٹو دیٹ اسٹل ایگزٹ ان دا مسلم ورلڈ ٹو دس ڈے اینڈ دا ورلڈ وٹ از دا نیریٹو پری ڈیسٹینیشن Allah and Qadr of Allah. Allah has decreed everything that's going to happen is going to happen. No, no one's there to stop it. They say that everything, if you raise your hand, Allah decreed it. If you lower your hand, Allah decreed it. Everything is decreed by Allah. This is an old argument in Islam. What's the benefit of it? The benefit to the ruling class of this narration or this narrative is that if everything is decreed by Allah, that means that I, the Khalifa, am in this seat because Allah decreed it. Do you understand? Then the third level is if Allah decreed me to be in this seat and you revolt and rise against me, you are rising against the will of Allah. Therefore, you are to be killed. This is how the narrative goes. Everything, this is the qada of Allah, this is the qadr of Allah, this is the X, Y, and Z of Allah. And so you say that this is the predestination. This is a very old argument. You have a, and if I say, Ya Ali, you have a problem. Well, I can respond to you that that's the qala and qadr. Allah required me to say, Ya Ali, that's why I said it. Or if I send la'an on Yazid, Allah required me to say it. It should go both ways, should it not? But it's selective. Nonetheless, I don't have time for that. Abu Hanifa was believing in predestination. He came and he said, I have three questions. What is the scenario? It's one of three. Either, it is either that everything is free will, or everything is predestination, or it's one of the three. Which one do you believe? Now, Imam told him, those are the three scenarios. His question was, is it qada or qada? Is it predestination or free will? Imam, Imam said it's, it's one of three situations. situations. Either, Either, because, because you, you know, Imam Sadiq made this clear. clear. It's al-amar bain al-amarain as far as we're concerned. That it's a matter between the two matters. Some things are predestined, some things are free will. The Imam said, the, se- the seventh Imam, five years old, is responding and he says, look, There's three scenarios to your answer, to your question, to answer them. One is the first scenario that either everything's free will, or two is everything is predestined, or for example, there's a, it's a balance between the two. He said, look, you say that everything is predestined. Okay, so let's answer free will, will first. first. If free will exists, exists your, your view, view is wrong. wrong. So let's, so let's finish, finish that, that off for a side. side. You, don't you don't care, care about, about free will. will. If, 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 if I, I prove free will, will your, your view is negated. negated. So you won't be interested in that, number one. Number two, if you say predestination, then that means Allah should not punish anyone for anything that they do. They sin, they drink, they do whatever they do, Allah shouldn't punish them because it's all predestined. That means the only conclusion is that it's one of the two. Abu Hanifa looked at this five-year-old boy and he was spellbound. He couldn't say a word. He was shocked, shell-shocked. In fact, the riwayat say that, that Abu, Abu Hanifa, Hanifa, because, because he, was he was older, older throughout, throughout his life, life he held, held a grudge against, against Imam al-Kazim. Because, because, because at the age, age of five years old, old Abu Hanifa, Hanifa was, was dismissed, dismissed by, by Imam al-Kazim. There's a moment in time a few years later that riwayat says Imam al-Kazim was about 10 years old or so. When he was 10 years old, Imam al-Kazim was praying in Medina. When he was praying in Medina, there were people walking by. You know, today, even till this day, if you go to Masjid al-Haram, You're trying to pray there and someone walks by. If you try to walk by someone, they'll stick their hand out in front. It happens till this day. No? They have a problem with someone walking by. Abu Hanifa saw Imam Kazim when we were praying namaz, praying, namaz, praying salah. salah. When he was, he was praying, praying salah, salah, someone was walking by, people were walking by. He, he went and he complained to Imam Sadiq. Sadiq. He said, Oh, Imam Rasulullah, your son was praying and people were walking by in front of him. How is it possible? He doesn't know how to pray? Imam called his son. He said, Musa, come. Say, assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam. He said, were you praying in that state where there were people walking all in front of you? Was your salah now bat- batal, for example? He wants, he wants to know. Abu Hanifa wants to know. He said, actually, my father, I was praying in such a state, I realized that no, I didn't realize anyone was around me. You'll remember what Amir al-Mu'mineen, his grandfather Ali ibn Abi Talib, when there was an arrow that was in the leg of Ali ibn Abi Talib, they said the only time you can take this out is when he is in salah, when he is reading namaz. And that is when he is in such a state where his body is here, but his mind and his heart is in, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the focus and the tawajjah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. You know, it was only after they removed the arrow from Ali ibn Abi Talib, that afterwards they, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al-Mu'min said, where did this color come from, the red color? He didn't realize that the arrow had been removed. At that point in time, he said, my father, Imam Kalim says, my focus was purely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I didn't realize what's in front of me, what's behind me, what's above me, what's below me. I had no idea. 
I was just in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Hanifa once again was upset and he left. He got his answer. That this idea that it matters where is my connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a third narration with respect to Imam Al-Kadhim and Abu Hanifa. Even though the Imam is young. The Imam Ali Musalam, Abu Hanifa comes and he asks, what is the rule for someone who requires, requires to use, to use relief relief themselves, themselves where they, 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 they are in a foreign, foreign land? land. They don't, they don't have, have a home, they don't, they don't have a place, place. They, don't they don't have anywhere, anywhere. they need to relieve themselves. themselves. Nature's called, they need to relieve themselves. The Imam Alayhi Musalam as a young boy, he listed out thing after thing. He said, make sure you're in a private quarter. Make sure you're not near any vegetation, any fruit bearing plants. Make sure you have this and that condition, private walls. Make sure that no one's around. And he went through 10, 12 different conditions to say that after these are completed, then and only then should you consider relieving yourself in an environment in a foreign land. Allahu Akbar. Because this was the Imam of Fiqh. It was the era and time of jurisprudence where things were being derived left, right, and center. And in that in same environment, the Imam alayhim salam is the one who laid and paved the framework for the establishment of our school of thought. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. But it wasn't all bad. It wasn't all negative. For example, there were other ulama. For example, Imam... Imam al-Shafi'i, for example, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, who I want to highlight here. Imam al-Shafi'i and Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal are two of the Imams of our brothers in Ahlul Sunnah. Do you know, Imam al-Shafi'i wrote so many ash'ar, so many poems in honor of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He's not a Shia, he's one of the Imams of Ahlul Sunnah. One of his famous poems was, لَوْ أَنَّ الْمُرْتَضَى يُبْدِي Mahalla. What's the first line of it? In Arabic, he's written a poem in honor of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen. In fact, he, he would say, for example, yeah, until, until when, until when, until when, until when, until until which time, time will, you will you blame, blame me, me for loving, loving this, this man? man? Referring, referring to Imam, Imam Ali. Ali. Was, was Hal Atta revealed, revealed for, for anyone except, except him? The eye of Hal Atta, Surah Dahr, Surah Insan. And was Fatima the Zahra married to anyone except him? In fact, he wrote so many lines of poetry in honor of Imam Ali that they said that he's a Shia. Some people allege that he was a Shia. Of course, he was not. He was one of the Imams of Ahl Sunnah, the Shafi'i school of thought. This same Imam Shafi'i says, I never went, went to, to the, the grave, grave of, of Imam, Imam al Khalid except, except that, that my Hajjah was, was re re answered. Allahu Akbar. This is not a Shia. I asked the world, those people, people who are against the Rasul in our world, world have, have you, you not, not read, read what, what not, not only Shia, Shia Ahlul Sunnah scholars have said about our Imams? Do you know the positions of the Imams? As one thing, especially in our riwayats, they say that anyone who has, a, has any difficulty, Imam al Kalim is Babu al Hawaj, the gateway to your needs. The same way Abu al Fadl al Abbas is, the same way Ali Asghar is, Babu al Hawaj, Imam al Kalim. Your du'as are accepted. Especially, especially anyone who has an eye ailment, they are told to do tawassul through Imam al Kalim. It will help you in the most difficult times, inshallah. This Imam Shafi'i is saying that this is one of the gates of tawassul is Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam. The next one is Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Ahmad ibn Hanbal was young in Medina when he was giving his dars during the time of Imam al-Kadhim. Do you know what happened? When Imam al-Kadhim was martyred, when he was shaheed, they paid all the ulama and they said, come and witness, bear witness over the body of Imam al-Kadhim that he had no marks on him. And he died a natural, natural death, death, a death, death of natural, natural causes. causes. Do you know, Do you know what, what happened? happened? When, when this, this happened, happened, they, they called, called all, all the ulama and got bought out. out. Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Hanbal. You know, our, the Middle East, most of the Khalij is Hanbali. They follow Hanbali fiqh. fiqh. He came and he said, if you pay me anything until the end of my life, I will never bear witness. Why? Because I've seen the body, body and from head to toe, it was laced with, with whip lashes. He said, said, any, any money, money that you pay, pay me, I will never. never. These, These were ulama of the sunnah who had integrity, who had, who had honor. honor. I will remind, remind you of Imam Nasai, if you remember. In the books of hadith of our brothers in Ahlul Sunnah, Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, these are the books of hadith. One of them is Imam Nasai. I've told you this before, I, I know you remember. Imam Nasai died. Why? Because he wrote a book called Khasais Ali, Amir al muminin about the fadail and the merits of Imam Ali. And when he wrote this book, they said, write a book like this about Muawiyah. He said, I cannot do that. It would be unjust, it would be unfair, it would be a lie. They beat him and beat him till he bled to death. 
Sun, Ahlul Sunnah scholar. So when we talk about Ali or we talk about the Ahlul Bayt, this is not a Shia thing. This is a thing that was accepted by all Muslims that only a few have deviated in the last 50 to 100 years. That's it. When we come to the position of the Imam at the next level, we need to understand how did the Imam move from, from Medina, Medina to Baghdad. Baghdad, Baghdad, Baghdad was, was created, created during, during the time, time of Mansur, Mansur, Mansur al-Dawaniqi. Mansur, Mansur created, created Baghdad. Baghdad. Before, Before it was not, it didn't have the presence. Of course, there were ancient civilizations in Baghdad, but new Baghdad was established by Mansur. Imam is, is in Medina. What happened? This is a lesson for you and I. Harun al-Abbasi, of course, we don't call him Rashid because Rashid means right, right, rightly guided. We don't accept him as rightly guided. Therefore, we call him Harun al-Abbasi. Harun al-Abbasi, he comes forward and he says, I need to strategize to get this person, the Imam of the Ra'fadis in prison. What do I do? He started looking for people who were close to the Imam in order to get the Imam captured. Do you know what he did? He found, he asked around, asked around, how did his wazirs ask around? They found one person. Muhammad Ibn Ismail. Do you know who Muhammad Ibn Ismail was? Muhammad, I'll make it even clearer for you. Muhammad Ibn Ismail Ibn Jafar al-Sadiq. The son of Imam al-Sadiq, Ismail, he died during the lifetime of the Imam himself. You know, by the way, the ulama said also, why did Allah make Musa al-Kadhim's enemy or opposition named Harun? You see, you see Musa, Musa, the, the prophet, prophet had, had Harun, Harun as well. well. Musa, Musa and Harun. Harun. Rasulullah has, has the hadith, Ya Ali, Ali anta min di manzanati Haruna min Musa. That, O oh, Ali, you are to me like Aaron was to Mo Moses. Why did Allah make Musa's enemy the name Harun? Because Allah, according to some ulama, there's a reason for this. Allah wanted it to be known that Allah makes a deputy, his name is Harun. The people may make a Khalifa, his name may be Harun, but it doesn't matter the name. That person is still, if he's appointed by people, he is still one who's wretched and wrong. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to appoint someone, no matter the name, he's still exalted. There is a hikmah in why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept these names. We'll get into that another time, inshallah, time permitting. But why did the Imam end up there? Muhammad ibn Ismail, Imam As-Sadiq, had a son by the name of Ismail, who are brothers in, uh, in, in Shiaism, who are the Ismaili group, they follow this son. But this son died during the lifetime of the Imam himself. In fact, Imam al-Sadiq, he invited his companions and he said, I, he removed the cover and he said, look, who is this? They said, it is your son Ismail. Notice and bear witness that he has died while I am alive. And after that, Imam al-Kadhim was the rightly guided correct Imam according to our narrations. This, Imam, this Ismail had a son by the name of Muhammad. This Muhammad is the one who actually told on Imam al-Kadhim what happened. He said that this is one person, person Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Ismail, Ismail who's upset the Imam. Imam. You, can you can use, use him, him in order, order to get, get your, achieve your goals. Oh Harun, what happened? Harun and him had an agreement that you will come, come and complain, complain about, about the Imam and, and on, on the basis, basis of your complaint, complaint I, will I will put him, put him in, in prison. prison. The complaint is that he is creating a revol revolution and I will stop that revolution and put him in prison. Of course the Imam knew. So what happened? Muhammad ibn Muslim, he comes to his uncle in Medina. He comes to his uncle Imam al-Kadhim. He says, oh my uncle, I am in a very difficult financial situation and I need your help and I need your assistance. He said, what's the issue? What's the matter? He says, I have business debts. My business has not succeeded. I am in heavy debt. I want to leave Medina and go to Baghdad. You want to go to Baghdad? He said, very well. The Imam said, is the stipend that I give you, is that not enough? Because the Imam used to help him out, give him some financial assistance every month. He said, that's not enough. He said, no, 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 I want to start a new life. I want to go to Baghdad and I want to establish my new life. He said, very well. Imam said, look, I will increase your stipend and I'll give you more money. Stay here in Medina. One time. He said, no, 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 I want to go to Baghdad. I insist, I insist. He said, no. Very good. He said, one more time. I insist. Why don't you stay in Medina? I'll give you more money and I'll take care of you. He said, no, no, my uncle, I want to go. I want to go. Third time, Imam said, stay here. I'll increase your income. Why don't you stay here? You don't have to go to Baghdad. Why are you going to go so far? He said, no. He said, Think about it. He said, no, no, I want to go. He said, very well, very good. Imam took some wealth, a bag of income. He said, how much do you need? He said, I need about 10,000 dirham. He said, very good. Imam took it and he gave it and extended his hand towards 
Muhammad ibn Ismail. Muhammad ibn Ismail grabbed the bag, Imam didn't let like go. He, he said, said one thing before he gave it to him. him. He, he looked at him and he said, oh Muhammad, oh my nephew, I'm giving you this, but just know one thing, my children are very young. And he let go. When he said this and let go, at that point in time, the narration says, when he left, the companion said, Yabna Rasulillah, we saw you in a very different state today. What happened? He said, anytime someone comes and asks you for something, you give it straight away. He said, and then on top of that, when, when you, you were, were giving, giving it to him, him you, you said, said a very strange, strange statement, statement what we've never, never heard you say, say before. before. So, what, so did what did you say? say? And, and you, you said, said that, that you, your, your children, children are small? small? He, he said, said yes. yes. I know what is the plot that's going on. He says he has spoken to Harun and Harun is going to use him to lodge a complaint against me that I am filing a revolution and I am raising a revolt against the empire and on the statement of Muhammad ibn Ismail he will take me and imprison me in Baghdad. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Then Yabna Rasulullah, why did you say that statement that my children are very young? He said, I said that statement because I will die there. And it's because of his motive. He says, Yabna Rasulullah, then why did you help him? He said, two reasons. Number one, in Islam, you cannot punish anyone before the crime has been done. I cannot just stop him. I cannot, I can try to guide him. I did what I could. Three times I reminded him. And three times I told, I told him, him, are you, are you sure? sure? Are you are sure? sure? He, had he had not committed, not committed the, crime. the crime, I can't, I can't condemn, condemn him. him. Number one. And number, and number two, two, a lesson, a lesson for, for all, all of us. us. He, says, he says, I, I did not, not want, want to be in the line of Qatar Rahim in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes on Yom I did not want to cut off the relations with the relative. I did not want to forsake the right of the relative in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, the Imam Ali Musalam, although this is extreme at one end, the Imam Ali Salam is giving us a lesson between me and you. Whether I've been in Europe or America or Canada, whether you know better than I do. How many of our families, they have issues between themselves? I've met brothers, brothers, lifelong brothers who are stiff enemies of one another. Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine? Do you know the, the difficulties that sometimes come up in life because of Qatar Rahim to cut off the near ones? And on top of that, look at the zulm of Muhammad ibn Muslim, what he did to the Imam himself. Allahu Akbar. This was the environment. This was the scenario. This is what's going to happen, was, was happening in that environment. Build those relationships. Don't sever the relationships. But even the Imams were not immune. You know, sometimes we say, fix your own house before telling other people. Nabi Nuh alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, his son is not from him. The Imam's own relatives tried to kill them. This happens, but the narration, the lesson, lesson for you and I is, is do whatever, whatever you can, can to build harmony. harmony. Nonetheless, nonetheless, Imam, Imam ended, ended up in Baghdad. Baghdad. For, for 14, 14 years, years at least, least he was, he was in, in prison. prison. Do you know do you what, know what, what kind, kind of prison, prison this was? was? It, it was, was such a difficult prison, prison that they say that Imam had to stay in a state of ruku the entire time. When he was standing, he was in a state of ruku. That's how low the ceiling was. I'm not in Masaib yet, I will get there in a moment. But the Masaib are not easy of Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam. Nonetheless, when he gets there, this is where I want to give the lesson. In the difficult times, in the most dire times, the Imams still preserve Shiism. How? Baghdad, there's a narration in the hadith, I want to remind you all, that is still there. And our ulama have commented on it. Do not spend the night in Baghdad. This is a hadith that's, that's in the books, you'll find it. Do not spend the night in Baghdad. Some people say, oh, this is because there was bloodshed and the walls of Baghdad were built by the blood of the shuhada. For example, you know in the old times, Cities used to have a wall around them. They used to be barricaded. Baghdad similarly was barricaded by a wall. This wall was called the wall which was made with the blood of the Sadat. It was made with the blood of the family of Rasulullah. That whenever they wanted to erect this particular wall, they would drain, drain the, the blood, blood of a Sayyid into, into the, the cement, cement and, and that, that was, was the wall, wall that was used to enclose Baghdad. Baghdad. This, this is, is the, the level, level of the, the atrocities of the Abbasid rulers. In that environment, in that state, Baghdad was a city at that time, if you know and you've, history, you've read the history, Baghdad was an environment where historians till this day say that era of 1800 to 1100 AD was the golden period of Islam. Because the great things were coming out during that time. One example for the youth is, the Banu Musa brothers, 
the Banu Musa brothers were three brothers who were very close to Harun. They were very close. But they are credited for creating the first what we would call computer. They created a, a self-acting device called which was which played the flute. The Banu Musa brothers used to get a heavy stipend from Harun. And they used it to build these types of devices. And so the first documented computer, as we would call it today, was created by the Banu Musa, Musa brothers, brothers in the 8th century Baghdad. Baghdad. And, and in, in fact, fact it, it was, was an it it was was interface. interface, it's called the first hardware software interface in history. Why? Because they had a cartridge in the middle, you could remove that and put another cartridge and it would play another tune. This, all these things happen, mathematics, sciences, a lot of things happen. But at the same time, during that time, a lot of it was to divert attention away from the Ahlul Bayt. You remember I said, it was the time of fiqh of, the, of Imam, Han, Imam Abu Hanifa, Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali. Also the Greek philosophy was established during that time. The Imam answered to that. And at the third level, Sufis, Sufism was rising. Why? All of this was to undermine the rigidity of Islam, according to them. They wanted to make Islam very soft and very easy. Why? So the rulers could establish themselves and fortify themselves. So in this state, Baghdad, why did the narration say don't spend the night in Baghdad? Is it because the blood of the shuhada was used to build Baghdad? No. Karbala is that place which has the highest esteem. It's built on the shuhada's blood. It's exalted, it's blessed. The blood of martyrs is blessed. So it's not that. The, the reason, reason according, according to ulama is based, based on when, when a city is established. established. And you, you can, can check, check this with modern science. science. When, when a city gets established, gets established there's, there's something, something called the spillover effect. Ideas spread very rapidly. For example, if you go to New York City, New York City has a very high spillover effect. So ideas spread very fast. Also viruses spread very fast. If you've looked at the news, New York, London, these places, viruses spread very fast. Whether it's COVID or ideas also spread like viruses. Do you know what's another byproduct and side effects of big cities? Vices. 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 Negative, Negative things. things. Drinking, Drinking alcohol, alcohol, party, gambling, gambling all, all of these things. things. They, they begin, begin to rise during in a city. Baghdad was that city. Baghdad was the modern day you, you put in the city of your choice. New York, London, Tokyo, Shanghai, XYZ, whatever. That city was Baghdad. And so at night, every vice happened in Baghdad. That's why the Ahlul Bayt said, don't spend the night in Baghdad. Because of the vices that were present there. Do you know what happened? There's a moment in time where there's a man by the name of Bishr. Bishr is a person who's a very wealthy statesman. He has a very large property. And the Imam is walking by. When the Imam is walking by, in the middle of the night, he hears music playing from this house. It's a party going on there. When he's passing by, the lady who is the servant of the house, she's throwing out the trash. When she's throwing out the trash at that point in time, the Imam passes by and he says, is this house the house of a man who's a free man or a slave? So said, hold on, this is one of the wealthiest men in the, the whole city. city. He's, he's having, having one, one of the, the most luxurious, luxurious parties, parties in the house. house. You're, You're asking, asking me, is he a free man, man or a slave? slave? He's, he's the, the freest, freest of men, he's, he's the, the most, most free. free. The Imam looked back and said, it seems like he's free. Because if he was a slave, he would not be acting like this. And he left. When he left, the servant went back into the house. Bishop said, what took you so long? He said, I, I got stopped by a man who was passing by. So what did he say? He said, is the owner of this house a free man or a slave? So what did you say? Said, of course, I said, it's a free man. He's one of the wealthiest men in Baghdad. He's the freest of men. So what did he say to that? He gave me a strange reply. What did he say? He said, it seems like he's a free man. Otherwise, he wouldn't be acting this way. Bishar, he ran without his feet. They called him Bishar al-Afi. Why? Because he ran without his shoes after the Imam. Because that point hit him so hard. It hit him like a bullet. And he said, he tracked down the Imam. He said, what did you say? And he understood at that point in time that he, he was, was not, not free, free, he was a slave. slave. I, I connect, connect this to what, what Imam Al-Hussein said on the plains of Karbala. Never forget it. Imam Al-Hussein is in his final moments. The, the, the enemy didn't know, is he alive or is he dead? Ibn Ziyad said, there's one way. I will tell you how to figure out if Hussein is alive or dead. He said, order for the horses and the men to go towards the tents of Hussein. And in that state, Imam Al-Hussein said a line. إِنْ لَكُمْ يَكُنْ دِينٌ وَلَا تَخَافُونَ الْمَعَادِ فَفَكُونُوا أَحْرَارًا فِي دُنْيَاكُمْ
This, this line, line should, should be, be on every banner in this world. world. The, the Imam said, if you don't believe in the Day of Judgment, and you have no deen, you have no religion, at least, at least be free in this world. That's why they call Sayyidina Shahada Ab al-Ahrar, the father of the free. Why, why? Imam al Hussein, I have a question for you. What's the question? Imam al Hussein, the opposition, the people who you said are not free, they have the property, they have the luxuries, they have the horses, they have the power, they have everything that anyone wanted in society. They were the most free by society's standards. And you're saying they're not free? What principle did the Imam outline? The same principle that Imam Kadhim outlined. We are slaves to our desires. When we overcome this and we free ourselves from the shackles of desires, then and only then are we free. Someone is a slave to their anger, someone is slave to their money, someone is slave to their luxuries, someone is free, a slave to something or the other. When we get above this and out of the that, that is, is the, the only time when, when we, we are, are free. free. And, and the, the Imam exhibited this at the highest level when they sent a lady, and of course this is a, a gathering with children, a lady to tempt the Imam. When they sent this lady to tempt the Imam when he was in the dungeon, at that point in time, they said they gave her some money and they said they want we want you to do this with the Imam, and they took. She went to the dungeon where the Imam was. At that, At that point, point in time, time she, she saw, saw the, the Imam in a state of ibadah, ibadah, a state, state of worship. worship. When, when she, she saw, saw the Imam in a state, state of ibadah and worship, the Imam, imam saw her. The Imam said, it, keep your distance and stay where you are. However, I am in a state of ibadah and worship. You are welcome to join me. She began to notice as the Imam continued to worship, she noticed the connection that he had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what words he was saying. And he was saying that, Oh Allah, thank you for giving me the opportunity to have a relationship with you in seclusion. You know, many people have been suffering during COVID in isolation. The key to, to succeed in this environment where you are locked down and in your house is to turn your, your isolation into seclusion. There was a scholar in Iran many years ago during the time of before the revolution, right before the revolution. And he was imprisoned. When he was imprisoned, his, he spoke to one of his friends who was also a scholar. This Maulana, he the Amama, he said, look, I'm really suffering in jail. It's a very difficult time. At that point in time, he said he gave him a book of poetry, of Islamic poetry, or some say it was the works of Rumi or something of this nature, that talked about a connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is Rumi good, bad? I don't want to get into that. There's some problems, some good things. Ali is, Rumi also is the one who said, As Ali amuz ikhlas amal. He wrote a qasida in honor of Ali. Learn from Ali the sincerity of action. When did he write this? He wrote this when Ali was in the battle of Khandaq. And Amr ibn Abdul Wud al Amari, he was on his chest, he stepped back and he stepped forward. And he said that I only did it because he spat on my face. And I want you to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rumi says, learn from Ali the sincerity of action. And he writes a long qasida in the Masnavi. So he gave him this book. One week later, the scholar came and he said, I'm trying to still get you out of jail, but it's very difficult. Just give me some more time. He said, you're trying to get me out. He said, I don't want to leave. So what happened? He said, he said I, I realized, realized that this, that this is, is the best, best opportunity, opportunity to get connected connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he turned, turned his isolation, isolation into seclusion. The same, same way Imam al Kazim turned the isolation into seclusion to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That lady who had been paid, she began to pray with the Imam behind the Imam. Night passed. The guards came at the time of Fajr. What did they notice? That this lady who they had paid was praying with the Imam. They said, what, we gave you one, one job, job, what did you do? do? He said, that doesn't, doesn't matter how much you pay me, I will, I will never leave the, the worship and, and the following of the Allah of this man, and I will never be following this man. Allah. Who is this Imam who changes the dynamics, who shifts the dynamics in ways that you and I cannot imagine? Nonetheless, we come to the musibah of the Imam. Do you know what happened? There was a follower of the Imam who was from Medina. He wanted to meet. The Imam. It was very difficult. You could not meet the Imam. Do you know what happened? He came all the way from Medina and he had to ask one person after the other in isolation to find out how can I meet the Imam. Of course, it was an era of taqiyya. You cannot ask and find out very easily. So he asked one person, 
Finally he asked another, another, another. He finally got to one prison guard who was a Shia in Taqayya. The Imam had kept his people in Taqayya as well. Ali bin Yaqteen, you'll remember. Ali bin Yaqteen was an agent of the Imam who was in the government, who the Imam said, stay in government, but stay in Taqayya and do work for our cause. Nonetheless, he found this Shia from Medina, he found for someone. He said, look, if you want to meet the Imam, you will get killed and I will get killed if we get caught. So we can't do this. He said, please, please, I beg of you, I've come all the way from Medina, I want to just meet the Imam of my time. It was as if we would know where Imam Zaman is, and we want to meet him. This is the level this person wanted to meet the Imam. He said, look, I can do one thing. I cannot take you through the front door, I cannot take you through the entrance of the jail, and I cannot take you through his cell. I can't do any of that. The only way is if you go through the ventilation system. The only way is if you go through the vent, through the ceiling and the roof, through that side, there was a small vent, and through that vent you can see the Imam. He said, very well. That's the only option I have, very well. He said, in, when the time came in the middle of the night, he said, at that point in time, he took him, he took him by the vent, he took him in the back side, where no one could see, he took, took him through the ventilation system, and there was one vent that opened into the cell of the Imam. At that point in time, the man's looking, the Shia from Medina is looking, he's looking, he's looking. He says, I don't see anything. I just see a white cloth on the ground. Where is the Imam? He said, that's your Imam, under the cloth. He said, no human being can be under that cloth. He said, they, they give, give the, the Imam, imam one, one small dry piece, piece of, of bread and one, one glass, glass of warm, warm water, water a day. day. That's, that's what, what he's been eating for years. For years. He spends, he spends his days, days and nights in ibadah. He spends his days and nights in worship. This was the imam of our time, of the, our seventh imam, the imam al-Kazim, the son of imam, al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Give your condolences now to the imam of our time. This imam, Imam Musa ibn Ja'far, he grants our hajat, Babul Hawa'ij, Musa ibn Ja'far. Do you know he spent his whole life in prison? Some say 14 years, some say more than this, 20 years. He died at the age of 55. He takes on imamat at the age of 20. 35 years of imama. Some say he had almost 30 years of imprisonment. Allah knows. But the poet Dabir captured this moment. Whatever it was, 14 or more, Allah knows. He says, Mawla pe intihai asiri guzar gai. Allahu Akbar. Referring to Imam al-Kazim alayhi salam. Asiri means imprisonment. And capture. He says, Mawla pe intihai. Dabir, the great poet. He says, Mawla pe intihai asiri guzar gai. Mawla pe intihai asiri guzar gai. Jawani o piri guzar gai. Qayd khane mein jawani o piri guzar gai. Allahu Akbar. He says that the Imam alayhi salam, his entire life, his youth and his old age, all of it ended in the Qaid Khana, in the Zindan, in the prisons, in the dungeons. And what dungeons they were. It was darkness in the dungeons. It was difficult in the dungeons. There's a moment in time when they bring dates in front of the Imam. When they bring dates in front of the Imam. The, the Imam, Imam eats, eats one, one of them, them. he eats, eats another. another. They, they said, no, finish, finish all of the dates. He says, no, what you want has been done. I've eaten enough. He knew that they had been poisoned. And when they had been poisoned at that point in time, the Imam Ali Musalam, they say that his body, the the poison began to seep into the body of the Imam, but he was in a very confined location. When the blood and the poison began to mix, they say that that poison was so strong that when it fell onto, onto the, the ground, ground, it would crack the ground. At that point, when that poison went into the body of the Imam, he was in the zindan. He would move to his right and he would hit himself on the wall. He would move to the left, he would hit himself on the wall. The Imam was struggling and the poison was affecting him. They say after some time, they called the doctor. When the doctor came, he asked to see the hand of the Imam. When he asked to see the hand of the Imam, the hand was completely white. It had gone completely pale. When it had gone completely pale, at that point in time, he said that he is not to live for very long. The Imam salam, his holy body, his holy soul departed his body. When the Imam al-Qadim's soul departed his body, you know, it was such a situation that no 
Shia, no one could come to the janaza of the Imam. Do you know what happened? They hired four laborers to come and take the body of Imam al kazim and to put it on a bridge in Baghdad. And they would call out, Mata, Imam al rafida the Imam al the Rahadis, the rejectors has been killed for three days. The body of Imam al kazim laid on the bridge in Baghdad, they say there was a moment in time that there was one individual who had made another and he had said, any Sayyid who is killed, I will bury them. They were being killed left, right and center. Bibi Fatima came in his dream and he said that my son has been on a bridge for three days and no one is there to bury him. Will you not take care of him? He got some men together and he helped make the assistance. At, At the, the other, other side, side from, from Ajaz, from, from, from the Mujahs of Imam, Imam, Imam Imam al came, when Imam al came, at that point in time, he gave ghusl and kafan and made all the arrangements in the namaz for his father to be buried. At that moment when Imam al salam came back, they said, Ya ibn Rasulullah, you made sure that all the obligations were taken care of of your father. But did he give any wasiyah? Did he give anything? He said, he said one thing that broke my heart, Imam al says. He says, what did he say? He said, oh my son, these shackles that are on me, I don't have much flesh. I have lost all of my flesh. And these shackles are so heavy, they have cut into my skin. But just one thing, just make sure that you bury me in this state. Why? Oh my father, because I want to meet my grandfather Rasulullah in this state. Do jumle masai ke sun lije de azadaro. Teen aise janaze the. Jo aisi dafan huye. Ek bibi sakina. Jo aisi halat mein zanjino mein dafan kar di gayi. Ek imam sajja. اور ایک مرحلہ یہ آیا کہ امام کازم علیہ السلام نے کہا کہ مجھے اسی حالت میں آپ دفن کیجئے گا میں نانا رسول اللہ سے کہوں گا کہ آپ کی امت نے میرے ساتھ کیا کیا اللہ لعنت اللہ علیہ القوم الظالمین والسلام علیہ السلام 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 یا اللہ اس کے لئے Anyone, Anyone who is suffering, suffering and help, help well, well, otherwise, Ya Allah, alleviate their difficulty this night. By Bab al Hawaij, Imam Musa al Jafa. Ya Allah, anyone who has any illness, anyone with eye illness, anyone with health illness, COVID, otherwise, Ya Allah, people are suffering across the globe. By Bab al Hawaij, Imam Musa al Kadhim, grant them their haja. Ya Allah, hasten the reappearance of Imam Sa'id al Asu Zaman and allow us to be amongst his companions when he returns. Matam Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا ایک بی بی سرحانے بیٹھی ہے کس نے جانے اسے خبر کی ہے ایک بی بی سرحانے بیٹھی ہے کس نے جانے اس خبر کی ہے ہاتھ پہلو پہ اپنے رکھے ہوئے آئی ہے فاطمہ رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا آج 
بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا حال اچھے نہیں ہے میت کے آ جائے جاز سے امامت کے حال اچھے نہیں ہے میت کے آ جائے جاز سے امامت کے شہر بغداد سے مدینے کا ہے بہت فاصلہ رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا ایک منا دین دائے دیتا ہے رافزیوں کا مولا مارا گیا ایک منا دین دائے دیتا ہے رافزیوں کا مولا مارا گیا آج اولاد پر محمد کی وقت کیا گیا رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا کبھی دادی کو یاد کرتا تھا کبھی بیٹی کو یاد کرتا تھا کبھی دادی کو یاد کرتا تھا کبھی بیٹی کو یاد کرتا تھا وقت آخر تھا اس کے ہونٹوں پر فاطمہ فاطمہ رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا قید خانے سے پل تلق اس کو چند مزدور لے کے آیا ہے قید خانے سے پل تلک اس کو چند مزدور لے کے آئے ہیں بیڑیوں کے نشان غربت کا لے رہے ہیں پتا رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا آج بغداد میں کوئی قیدی ہو گیا ہے رہا رضا مولا رحم اللہ من خل الفاتحہ been requested that we recite Amayu Jibu five times for those listed on the screen and for all Shafai Marib. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amayu Jibu al-Mustarra idha da'ahu yakshifu al-Suh. Amayu Jibu al-Mustarra idha da'ahu yakshifu al-Suh. Amayu Jibu al-Mustarra idha da'ahu yakshifu al-Suh. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء اللهم صل على محمد
Assalamu alaikum Rasulullah, Assalamu alaikum Amir al Mu'minin, Assalamu alaikum Fatima al Zahra, Assalamu alaikum Hassan al Mustaba, Assalamu alaikum Hussein Shahid bi Karbala, Assalamu alaikum Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, Assalamu alaikum Ali ibn Hussein Zain al Abidin, Assalamu alaikum Muhammad ibn Ali al Bakr, Assalamu alaikum Jafar ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, Assalamu alaikum Musa ibn Jafar al Qadim, Assalamu alaikum Ali ibn Musa Riza. Assalamu alaikum ya Muhammad ibn Ali al-Taki, Assalamu alaikum ya Ali ibn Muhammad al-Naki, Assalamu alaikum ya Hassan ibn Ali al-Askari, Assalamu alaikum ya Hutsalallahi ibn al-Hassan, Ya sahib al-Askari al-Zaman, Sayyidi al-Aman, 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 al-Fatnati al-Zaman, Assalamu alaikum ya Khalifa al-Rahman, Assalamu alaikum ya Shriq al-Quran, Assalamu alaikum ya Kabat al-Iman, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma qali waliyika al-Hajjat ibn al-Hassan, Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih Fi hadhi saati wa fi kulli saa Waliyan wa hafida wa qaidan wa nasira Wa qalilan wa ayna Hatta tuskinahu ardaka tawa Wa tumatiahu fiha tawila Bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin